I've had Tesla solar panels and a Powerwall for a year now. Stay with me until the end of the review because you're going to hear one of the most remarkable customer experiences. You'll know I'm at that point when you hear me say, the next words that this man says, I have never heard spoken by a customer service representative ever. It's a great story and there are many others in this video, so I invite you to stay with it for the whole thing. All right, so let's get started. In this video, I'm going to take you through the process as I made the decision to buy solar panels, which companies I requested a bid from, what made Tesla stand out from its competition, and then I'm gonna talk about what the process was like having the panels installed and what it's been like having the panels operational since the day they were first turned on up until today. In the description below this video, I'm going to be sharing my owner's referral link. That link can get you up to $250 off your solar panels once they're activated. I ordered my system in 2018, but I was a car owner first. I ordered a Model S back in January of 2018, so I had some prior experience with the company. However, at the time, Solar City was a recent acquisition, and I wasn't sure whether or not I could expect the same service from their solar division. All I knew for sure from my research was that Tesla's Powerwall was the absolute top of the line. If you don't already know, the Powerwall is the home battery that accompanies the system. Let me tell you that a battery is essential. In San Diego, SDG&E was switching to time of use. That meant they were going to begin billing more for electricity usage during prime hours, in the evening after the sun goes down. Without a battery, Panels would only supply power during the day, when no one was home, usage is low, and the car is not even in the garage charging. It's pointless to invest in a big system unless you're just trying to supplement your bill a little bit, or you just really like solar panels as a roof decoration. With a battery, you can store power all day long and save it for the peak evening hours. Personally, we had our goal set on energy independence, or we wanted to achieve that as closely as possible, so we definitely wanted a battery. My research proved that the Powerwall was hands down the very best. Aside from a Powerwall, there were two other factors weighing into my decision, the warranty and customer service. I would definitely remind the viewer that you get what you pay for. It was easy to determine that cheap panels would either break down or the electricity production would decline significantly with time. A warranty is more than just the commitment of the product. It's also a commitment of the company. If you have a 20 year warranty, you want to make sure the customer service is excellent. The last thing you want is 20 years working alongside a company that doesn't answer your calls, puts you on hold, or makes you talk to a machine. As it was, I requested three bids from companies that all boasted high quality solar panels. Those companies were Sunrun, HES Solar, and Tesla. So when I interacted with these three companies in the very beginning, I paid attention to how they treated me. Since this is a Tesla review, I will only briefly describe my interaction with the other two companies, but I do think that what I say about them does offer something relevant and important to how Tesla contrasts. I should mention that I had just recently moved into this house. I was renovating two thirds of it and hadn't really fully moved in yet. The energy expenses that we had accrued so far were definitely inaccurate. Most of it was probably used for the tools that the construction workers were using to build the other part of the house. We didn't have operational heating and cooling yet. We didn't have many of the electronics and appliances that we knew would be getting later that year. This poses a difficulty for solar companies. All three of the companies that I spoke to wanted to see at least three months of energy bills so that they could design a quote for me. Not only had I not even lived there for three months yet, but the time that I was there, the energy use wasn't even typical. My energy need was basically theoretical. Of the three companies, this was too much for Sunrun to handle. Talking to them felt like interacting with a customer service rep who's forced to use a script. It was, it was very obvious they wanted my business, but they had no idea how to handle my request without the information that their system required in order to give me a quote. They just couldn't figure it out, and I lost my patience pretty quickly. The representative from Tesla, on the other hand, was exactly what you want customer service to be like. I told them I'd rather pay too much and have sufficient energy to get through winter than save money and possibly have a higher energy bill. Okay. I told them that I didn't have reliable energy bills yet. We can work with that. I asked them to plan for a car that we'd be charging at home. Sure, we can factor that in. I told them about heating and cooling units that we had ordered and that had been installed but were not yet turned on. Okay. Tesla, at all points along the way, Tesla listened 
and took note of what I said and factored it into the equation. And when they didn't have the answers, they spoke to somebody with more experience who could figure out and model a solution that would work for me. Side note, it's also what I wish I could find in a doctor, but I don't think other companies like doing this. I think other companies would rather come in with a low bid and get your business rather than meet you at your overwhelming requests and throw a big number at you that might scare you away. It was everything I wanted in customer service and I was ready to sign up for Tesla. There was only one problem. The Powerwall was on back order and wouldn't be available for months. I didn't want to wait. I was discouraged, but not done. I had arranged for a quote from another company. HES Solar is family owned in San Diego. They had it a lot easier than the other two companies that I spoke to because rather than go through the entire conversation about my energy, energy needs again, I just brought the plan that Tesla gave me to the table and they were able to work from that, which gave them a really unfair advantage. And they gave you the kind of personal experience that you would expect from a small family owned local business. And best of all, their manager had the foresight to order an abundance of Tesla Powerwalls. So while it seemed everyone else, including Tesla, had them on back order, this company had them ready to install today. On the other hand, their quote was also the highest. I probably would have gone with HES anyway had Tesla not given me another call. Tesla called because they had received a new shipment of Powerwall batteries and they were good to go. What's more, they came under HES by thousands of dollars. So at that point I had to make my decision. Do I go with a more expensive but local and family owned business that I've just met or do I spend less on a company that I've already established a relationship since I bought my car nine months ago and has proven to listen well and have excellent customer service? I went with Tesla. The system I signed for had a solar array size of 7.15 kilowatts, a 20 year warranty, and was worth almost $40,000. That $40,000, by the way, included the Powerwall and all installation costs. So a thing about bids, when they start off, they usually just take a Google Earth and they draw out where the solar panels can go. It's a very rough design, but they don't send somebody out to actually take measurements until after you've committed. So somebody comes out, they check out the roof, they make a real design, they give you an official contract, you sign it, and then that plan goes through permitting through the city before it can come back and work can actually get started. Once the permits are approved, a date is set and Tesla comes in to install your solar panels, your solar wall, and all the accompanying equipment. When the team comes in to install the panels, it takes one day. It's connected to a little gateway on the side of the house that connects wirelessly with your home network. That gateway is used for remote monitoring both by Tesla and by the Tesla app which I will show you in a few minutes. Once all of that is done, it's necessary to wait for the city to come by and personally inspect it. This is when I first encountered problems. Now, when I say problems, it sounds like a bad thing, but really it all depends on how you handle the problems. The first problem arose the day after the panels were installed. Our roof leaked. Now, mind you, this was San Diego and this was late fall. I think this was the first time since we moved in that it really rained. Tesla guarantees their roofing install though, so I didn't worry about it. I just called Tesla. It was about nine o'clock at night. And while it was after business hours, I figured I would just leave a message and they would call me back in the morning. Well, I never got a chance to leave a message because somebody picked up the phone. And when they heard that I had a leak and they had just installed yesterday, they connected me with their emergency roofing repair team. 20 minutes later, I get a knock on the door by about six guys wearing raincoats and a ladder ready to get up on my roof and see what the problem is. Wasn't really expecting that, but sure, I'll take it. It's 9.30 p.m. in November and it's raining outside and people are ready to help me with my roof. A few more minutes goes by, another knock on the door. They say, we checked it out and the installation is fine. Well, what about my leak? Your roof had some pooling water in the corner above your kitchen over there where it couldn't get around the corner and go down the drain. Oh no. How much, how, how bad is it? I will never forget his response. He told me it's not bad anymore because we took care of it. What do you mean you took care of it? We patched it up. I braced myself. Okay. And how much is that going to cost me? Nothing on the house. It, it wasn't Tesla's fault? Nope. Well, then why did you fix it? We figured we were up there anyway, so why not? Okay, well, is there a fee for having to come out at 9.30 on a weekday night in the rain? 
Or do I have to pay you for materials? Nope. I was in shock. What kind of company has an emergency roofing team that comes out at night in the rain to fix your roof immediately for free? After that incident, weeks go by. It shouldn't have been that long, but somebody from permitting at Tesla has to meet with somebody from the city to go over the plan on site because there are some special exceptions about my property that need to be reviewed. The permitting guy from Tesla, his name is like Jim or something, right? They come by, everything gets signed off. The system is supposed to be turned on remotely within days. The days go by, the system doesn't get turned on, and I start to get concerned. I give another call to Tesla to troubleshoot. It turns out a little antenna that goes with the gateway about that long hadn't been screwed on and wasn't there. So a part needed to be ordered. Very simple part, comes in an envelope, I can screw it on myself. I just have to wait a little while for it to come. That's fine, let's get this done. Days go by, no antenna. I need to call Tesla to figure out the status of the part, but I don't know which department to call. It's like shipping, right? What department is that? I don't know, so I go through my emails. I'm looking for a phone number. The most recent email I have is from like Jim, right? The guy who does the permitting. Now I know Jim's not the shipping department, but I just need to call Tesla. So I'm thinking this is the phone number for like the main number. I'm gonna call it up. It's gonna say, welcome to Tesla. Press one for English. Like that's what I want. I just want the main number so that I can get to the right department so that I can figure out where the part is. So I dial the number. Doesn't go to the main Tesla number. Instead I get, this is Jim. Oh, uh, Jim, how can I help you? Oh, uh, nothing. Actually, I um, I didn't mean to call you. I was I was trying to just reach the main number. Can you, can you tell me the main number for Tesla Solar? I think I can help you. What do you need? Oh, no, no, that's okay. Um, it's just that there's the part missing and I need to figure out the status of the shipment. It's not even your department. The next words that this man says, I have never heard spoken by a customer service representative ever. So simple and yet so completely foreign, I'm blown away. No, that's not my department, but I'm happy to help you anyway. I'm about to head back to the office in 10 minutes. I will check on the shipment personally. Call me callous, but I'm skeptical when somebody says they're going to do something personally when it's not in their department. I interpret that to mean that they're going to drop it off on a secretary's desk and it's going to get lost in a stack of to-dos. So I say, oh no, no, that's quite all right. I don't want to inconvenience you. I'll just call the main number. Can you tell me what that is? And he goes, oh, come on. I'm going back to the office anyway. It's no problem. I'll call you back in 10 minutes. Okay. Guess how many minutes goes by? and I get a call. Hey Ben, this is Jim. I just wanted to let you know that I checked on that shipment and it should be arriving tomorrow. Jim, wow, Re tomorrow? Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, that's, that, that you have done more than enough. Thank you. That to me is the highest level of customer service there can be. From there, everything else goes very smoothly. True to Jim's word, the part arrives the very next day. It comes in an envelope, I screw it into the gateway, I call Tesla, Tesla activates the system, and just like that, I can monitor my solar panels with my phone. The total cost of the system was $39,637.75. I financed the system with a solar loan, which was really easy to get and had a very reasonable APR. However, Several months later, I did a cash out refinance for my newly renovated home and I used the cash from the refinance to pay off the solar loan and because the rate was lower than my previous loan, my mortgage actually dropped. So to me, it feels like my solar panels were free, yet nevertheless, I still got the tax refund that April. The tax refund in California that year was about one third the cost of the system, one third of $40,000. I wanted to share you a few things about performance. So this is the Tesla app. You can view your different products by swiping on the screen. And here we have the monitoring for the solar panels and Tesla Powerwall. This part is my favorite feature, the power flow. This shows us a live update of where energy is being sourced from. So right now it's about a quarter to four in the afternoon and the energy is coming from the solar panels uh, and it's flowing into our house and into the grid. Now later today, after the sun goes down, you'll see this graphic change where the energy flow is coming from the power wall and going into the house. 
And then finally, early in the morning, when the power wall battery is fully depleted, the energy will come from the grid and directly into the house. So you can see that the power wall uh, was fully depleted at four o'clock in the morning. There's our solar energy production, and here's our grid. So once the power wall was totally depleted, we took energy from the grid. In the morning, when the sun came up, we stopped taking energy from the grid and we started charging the power wall. And then once that was fully charged, we began putting energy into the grid. So here's our solar production. And then next to that, we can show the house. So you can see that energy just cuts off at about 10 o'clock in the morning or so. That's probably because one of my Airbnb guests checked out at that time. So if we exit out of here, we can show one of the other views. You can see the performance of the system. So this is the performance for the week of February 3rd through February 8th, 68%. Now again, this is February, so the weather is a little bit cloudier, the sun is lower in the sky, the days are shorter. Uh, the 68% doesn't really bother me though because of what we saw over here. When we put energy back into the grid, we end up earning ourselves a credit that we can use when the battery is not supplying our needs. And you're going to hear me talk a little bit more about performance next. The estimated first year of production was 9,985 kilowatt hours. From my app in 2019, I can see that I actually produced 10,946 kilowatt hours. That's almost 10% better than what I was quoted. Now, of course, my goal was complete energy independence. Last year, I spent zero on electricity. In fact, by December, I had a $200 credit coming from SDG and E for the energy my house produced that got put back into the grid. So in other words, instead of paying an energy bill, I get paid an energy bill. And this system is supposed to last for 30 years. So let's review. Cash out refinance made the system free, basically. Federal tax credit pays me for installing solar. I no longer have an electricity bill. Instead, the utility company pays me. I'd say overall, I'm a pretty satisfied customer. Does the system meet my expectations? Yes. Does the customer service meet my expectations? Yes. Does the warranty meet my expectations? Yes. I have told people that my solar panels and my power wall are the best thing I've ever bought. It has been an investment beyond my wildest dreams. I love, love what we were able to do. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you've gained something from it. And I hope the next time you hear somebody say that Tesla's amazing, you have a better idea of why they'd say something like this. I 100% recommend Tesla if you're going to install solar panels. And again, in the description below, I left my referral code so that you can get $250 off your solar panels if you order through Tesla. If you'd like to see other videos by me, definitely subscribe, give me a thumbs up. You can also check out my blog at neverbeenbetter.com or follow me on Twitter where I talk about finance and news and being a dad and being a teacher and being the owner of a new startup and all of that stuff at Never Been Better. Again, thanks for watching.